Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to part two on creating a level in Blender. Uh, in the first part, we created the skybox, as you can see in front of you. And today, what we're going to do is actually go ahead and create some terrain. Now, just like the skybox, the terrain uses a very well-established algorithm in it, and it's called height maps. And a height map is a simple uh, way of encoding height information, generally using a grayscale image. Uh, so what you do is have each pixel of the um, image that you're using in the height map applies to a certain section of the terrain mesh and distorts it accordingly. So the whitest, the whiteness of the value or the blackness of the value, depending on perspective, I suppose, indicates how high or how low its displacement is. So a completely white value is as high as you can be and a completely black value is as low as you can be. Now let's actually jump in and look at this. This is actually going to be a very uh, quick tutorial because the process is really quite simple when you get down to it. Now to create a height map, you can use a number of um, off the shelf tools. Now I've actually linked a couple. I've done a text based version of this tutorial as well. It's linked in the comments below and in that one I've got links to a couple of um, height mapping tools or basically landscape tools that can export a height map. Uh, those are things like Terragen, Bryce, or um, Geovox. They, they kind of, there's probably a few dozen more type programs. Or we can just use a simple paint program and that's what I'm actually going to do today. I'm going to show you how to create a height map using just paint.net. Um, so you can use whatever um, graphics program you want. As long as you're on Windows, paint.net is a completely free application so that's always nice. Um, what you want to probably do is create your height map in power of two texture format. So uh, 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 2048, 2048 by 1024, etc. And I'm just going to go ahead and create 1024 by 1024. Now remember, each pixel in this texture corresponds to a corresponding um, portion of the train. So the top left corner of your train is here, top right, bottom right, bottom left, etc. And what we want to do first off is set to a baseline value. So while I said that uh, white is as high as you get, black is as low as you get, that means we want to probably start with neutral for the entire background. So we're going to flood fill our background with gray. So bring up your color wheel like so. Any paint program is going to have the equivalent. And you're in your RGB settings, you're just going to set your RGB to the midpoint between 256 which is 128, 128, and 128, which is also known as gray. And then uh, fill in your background accordingly. So there you go. So now we have a completely flat terrain texture. And I'm just going to make this one very, very simple. What I want to have is um, it ringed with high and then get shorter, um, get shallower as you go in towards the center. So I'm going to have a black middle surrounded by a white background. Uh, we can do this pretty simply with just the uh, paintbrush tool. So we're going to do paintbrush here and we're going to make it big so we can do a big swath at once, bigger. Uh, let's go with about 300. Yeah, that's a good size. Uh, and what you want to do is keep each of these values consistent. So have your red, your green, and your blue component always the same. So what we could do is say like 165, 165, 165 will be a darker gray. Or what we'll do is we'll come down here and the easiest way to actually do this is we'll go back to the default mid value and we'll set the, just slide in the HSV value. This might also be H, S, uh, B for brightness. Uh, so it's either V for value or B for brightness. And you can create it darker or lighter just by sliding this back and forth. So this is 50-50, which is our perfect gray. So we want to do our white first. So let's bring this value down to near white, like so. And we're just going to paint. So we don't want to have full hardness, like maybe like that. So it's going to splatter a bit. And we could also set our fill to change a bit, but I'll just stay with a solid fill. All right. So now we have a ringed out, outer edge. Um, and now what I want to do is go to the center and make it as dark as we can go. So the middle value, there we go. So let's actually, let's undo that a bit. A little more harsh than I meant to. All right, so we've got a nice radius around that. And then we're just going to come here and go a little bit on the darkish gray side, like so. And we'll just do some splattering in this area to make it a little bit less harsh. So harden is way down. We'll change this to 30% fill and we'll just, there, that's actually gonna give a very weird result, but we'll go with it. So here is actually, you know what, now I'll just go in and do uh, blur. 
get some of that harshness out of there. Effects, blur, Gaussian blur. Like so. All right, so now we're not gonna have those incredibly harsh lines. There is our texture. It's gonna generate a somewhat weird shape for us, but it uh, should be interesting. So just go ahead and save that somewhere. So save it to your desktop, for example, as height map. Any texture format that Blender can support, which is pretty, pretty much all of them is fine. So now we have our height map. Let's go back to, and I'm gonna pick up where we left off. So this is our um, tile mapped world. And now what we need to do is apply that height map to something. Now that means you need to have a mesh that's big enough and with enough detail that that can deform nicely. So not enough detail, you're not gonna get a very good result. Too much detail, you're gonna have more processing power required to do it. So uh, we don't need this guy at all, oops. Ah, oh, go away, go away. All right, so let's go make sure that our cursor is at the origin, like so. And again, I assume you know how to use Blender. If you don't, I'll link a series at the bottom I've already done. We'll teach you everything you need to know to get up to this point. Um, there we go. So we're now at our origin. We'll just go ahead and add a mesh. And what we want is a plane. Now, a plane is also known as a quad. So basically, it's a four-sided shape. And now we need to add a bunch of detail to it. First off, I guess we'll just scale it up. We want to kind of match our outlying um, uh, skybox so we don't exceed it. So our train's going to be, I'm just going to do a scale 10. So if I scroll back, we're still well inside of our skybox, but we got a lot of terrain to play with now. And we could keep going a little bit more if you wanted, but uh, 10 times scale works pretty well for me. But still, this is just uh, two triangles at this point. So we're obviously going to need to add a bunch of detail. So just go in here and hit tab. And what we're going to do is subdivide it. So just W and then subdivide. So now we have four quads. Do it again, again, and again, and again, and again, and one more time. So right now we're sitting at about... Uh, 32,000 triangles, which gives us a pretty good amount of detail. Not going to be overkill. Keep in mind, this is your entire landscape we're talking about here. So that should give you enough polygons to work with so that your, your height map will distort it nicely. So now that we're here and got this all selected, this is important you don't miss this. Hit U, hit U, and then unwrap. Since it's a nice big plane, there's no real involvement in texture mapping. We'll just do a consistent flat UV unwrap. Works well. So our shape is now UV unwrapped, but you needed to do that because we're going to have to use that UV mapping in a minute. Now next up, what we're going to probably want to do is come in here to shading and UVs and turn smooth faces on. Otherwise your train is going to look very jagged and your, your shadows are going to look a little strange. Now if you don't want a nice flowing organic um, train, don't do this. Or you can selectively turn them back on and off. But I think by default, I normally start with smooth faces and then I'll sharpen the ones I need sharpened as opposed to going in the other direction. Okay, so we now have our train. What we need to do now is bring in our height map. Now don't worry about a texture at this point, like a texture map for this guy. So let me just turn off these two guys to the side. Let's go into your textures here and create a new one and name it. Uh, naming is kind of important so we can actually find it later. You don't have to name it, but it does make it easier. And we'll call this guy height map. Now UV and such don't matter. We just need to have the image attached to something in the scene. And our plane makes as much sense as anywhere. So then go ahead, open it and select the height map you picked earlier. Now don't worry about anything else. You don't need to apply um, texture coordinates or anything else here. Uh, this is not a display texture. This is just going to be for displacement. All right, so now that we're done that, let's go over here to displacement. We'll go out of uh, edit mode. So we're back in object mode right here so you can see the end result of this. Because when you're in edit mode, displacement modifiers don't apply until you actually apply them. So come on in here and then add a modifier. I gave a bit of a spoiler there. We want the displacement modifier. Just pick it like so. And now displacement modifier is being applied to our shape. Now, obviously it's not doing much because we haven't given it a height map to work with. So here under texture, drop this guy down and pick your newly created height map, like so. And immediately you can see the result. Now, what you're gonna find is you may not want it to work the way it's done. You may not want, uh, you want your, want your base level to be a little bit different. You can use mid-level to do change that, like so. But the one you're gonna probably play with the most is strength. And this is the amount that the terrain is applied. And you can actually invert it like so. But let's go with that. So there's your high points, your mid, and then your low, like we drew with our map. So you can see 
the end result going on here. So your black here is influencing this area right here, and your white is your highest area right here. And then your gray midpoints are raised here. So as we add and edit this guy, it will directly affect this shape. So if you want to raise or lower, uh, just modify and edit this height map. And I don't know if the link is live. Let me go ahead and check that. Um, I don't know what color I have active. All right, let's change that, save. Uh, no, it does not appear to be a live link. So could be, you have to reapply it. Oh, no, you have to re-import it. Okay, so I'll come on back here. There, so you'll, you'll have to re-import your texture to have the changes you make change. But otherwise, it does appear you can make it live. So, save, re-import, and you can immediately see the changes happen. So this is basically it. That is, you create the height map in uh, any kind of editor you wish, or you're using a program, and it defines the height and the details that are gonna to correspond to the displacement that is done here. Now, the last thing that you probably want to be aware of is if you don't use modifiers very often, when you are done with this modifier, like for example, if I go here into edit mode, you'll see boom, it instantly went away. Modifiers do not apply until you actually apply them to the object anyways. So they work in a stack of modifiers. So if you want to permanently apply this modifier, you can do here as an apply, or you could do a shape key, which is a bit beyond what I want to do. So, but I'm not going to apply this guy yet, but we're going to save it. And this is the end of our tutorial. Now in the next part, we're going to look at actually texturing this guy uh, to make it you know, look a bit less like a blob of blobbiness and a bit more like an actual train. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So today we covered um, creating a height map in a paint program and applying it in Blender using the displacement map. As you can see, you can rapidly create trains this way. Next up, we'll cover texturing it to make it actually look like a train. And then we're basically done. And you can see the power of using Blender to create levels very, very quickly, very, very easily. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Bye.